Hi, and welcome to another action-packed episode. Today we are looking at this Acer AX3400G for a customer of mine, and um, it doesn't power on properly. Uh, we can pr press the power button. The uh, LED flashes once. The fans turn on. But there's absolutely no activity coming from the computer. So I'll bring you in for a closer look and we'll investigate what problems we can find with this Acer. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a quick inspection here on the main board inside of this computer. I have the side off and uh, everything's unplugged. You want to always be safe when working on anything electrical. Make sure it's not plugged in and that there's no power still in the machine. So I'm just looking at uh, like capacitors which are uh, you know these guys here and here. These are solid caps. These tend to have a much longer lifespan than the regular electrolytic capacitors. Everything looks fairly good. Um, the CPU is quite, well the heat sink on it is quite dusty. I'll clean that out. Um, I don't see anything at fault visually on the main board. So the next visual inspection we'll take is uh, the power supply. This is this little fella here that's mounted on the bottom of the case. I'll get that open and we'll take a look inside. Okay, so some things I'm going to try first. I've, uh, I want to check to see if any of the components in here, like say the memory, or the uh, optical drive and hard drive, which is mount mounted to the bottom of this, is causing any fault in the motherboard not booting properly. So I've removed the optical and the hard drive out of the equation. And now we're going to turn it on. We have our top here. The power light is still not illuminating. We have the motherboard powered on, as we can see here with the fan running. Still no visual display. So what I'll do next is um, we'll start removing these sticks of memory one at a time and see if one of those could be causing the power issue. Um, let's get to it. Okay, so I removed this here, two gig stick from the second slot. Now I'm gonna to try to power it on again. No power light. The motherboard is running and we have no display. So next, I will pull that one out and see if we get any kind of error message or I should say beeping of the motherboard because there's no memory installed. Sometimes they'll throw an, error, an audible error code to let you know that there's a memory issue. And um, we'll maybe swap out the memory sticks to see if you know one's bad and one's not bad. So let's do some testing. Okay, I'm gonna try to do some testing here on the voltages coming from the power supply into the main board here and back here. Now, we have to be careful when we do this not to uh, you know, short anything out and be very, very careful with our um, testing probes here. I'm just gonna turn this on. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to find a nice solid ground to put my negative probe into. So I've removed a screw from the power supply. I'm just going to rest it down in here. It's hard to see, but there's just a, you know, basically a socket where the screw goes into. And I'm resting my negative post there. And now, move this a little closer so you can see it. We're going to test for our DC voltage. 
and we'll check each one of these. We're getting 3.3, that's good. 12 volts. That should be nothing as it's a ground. This is the on switch, should be nothing. Then we have ground, ground, ground. We have another 5 volts, which is good. 4.9 is close enough for this. We should have three of those. There's number two, and there's number three. So that's checking out. And we have 3.3 .3 there again on our yellow, our orange. 12, 12. We have a couple ground posts in there. Then we have another red. Gives us our five. Ground, and then another red gives us our five. Orange is three. Orange is three. So now I'm going to come back here. You're not going to be able to see it because of my angle, but I'm going to check this four pin power connector here as well. Checking the brown leads. So that's 12 volts, it's exactly what we're looking for. And the other one is also 12 volts. So our voltage from the power supply is fine. So this is working properly. Now what we, what we need to find out, I guess, is why we're not posting on the motherboard. So maybe I'll try some different memory. I know there's none in it now, I'm just doing that to test the power supply, but uh, I'll do some more troubleshooting and let's, you know, get into it and see what else we can figure out with this poor little computer. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I've been playing with various things like uh, the power switch and swapping out memory. None of that's working. So what I'm going to try now is uh, this right here is your battery your CMOS battery, or your BIOS battery, whichever you may want to call it. I'm just going to remove this, like so. Oozy. So with that removed, what, what it's going to do is reset the BIOS CMOS to factory defaults. Because this here, this little battery, Focus you camera. Little battery. Saves your date and time. And uh, all the settings that configure the motherboard to run properly. Now I'm putting it back in. I'm going to reconnect the optical drive. it again. Plug in the power supply, that would be helpful. Here's my power button. I uh, removed it from the housing, the front housing, so we can... Uh... Yeah, that power light's just not staying on. That's supposed to be solid blue. power switch issue. If you hold in the power button it does a force shutdown, which nobody likes to do. It's got one little flash of blue and that's all it does. I'm kind of scratching my head on this one. So really I know the voltages came back correct on that power supply but I'm still thinking it's the power supply. I may be wrong, but I might just do a... replace the capacitors in that power supply and see if that helps. There we 
was playing, playing around with the power button just to make sure it's not sticking or something. Yeah, still nothing on screen from this standpoint. Um, bummer! I want it to be resurrected. I hate throwing stuff away. Americans do that more than anybody else in the world. So, let's get, get back into this thing and uh, find out what the hell's going on. Okay, so my next idea, my plan anyway, instead of, you know, busting open this power supply and tinkering with stuff, I'm going to use this normal, enormous spare desktop hard drive hard drive, I mean power supply that I have on this computer here and see if it changes anything. That will uh, rule out the power supply issue. Let's just get this little fella plugged in. Not very little, it's more like enormous. That's cool. Quarters. We'll make it happen. Okay, so the main power connector's in. Of course, I've disconnected everything that goes to the original power supply. Just going to scoot this over here. We can plug in our CPU power. Where all the other wires are free. We'll put this in the off position while we plug it in. That's in. I'll turn this on. And then we will hit our trusty power button. And we get a solid blue light. So we do have a power supply issue here. And that two beeps is a great sign. It's looking for a boot device, which we don't have plugged in because the optical and hard drive are removed at this point. So I'm gonna do a cap replacement on the power supply and we'll test it again. It's clearly this one is working as it should. A solid blue light and we have video so that's super duper. We'll get into this and um, operate. Let's go. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, replace this main grouping of capacitors in this section. Um, and after that, we will test again and hopefully have some kind of improvement on our Acer computer. A little dusty in there, but uh, that's where we'll go. I'll probably walk you through a couple of the caps, show you how they're replaced. Um, you can also see that on my Acer monitor video. I'll put a link below. But uh, let's go and replace these guys and try to get some life back. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't have the voltage rating on these capacitors in stock right now. They're uh, 2200 microfarad capacitors at uh, various voltages. One is uh, 6.3 volts, a couple at 16 volts. I just don't have those, but um, I went through my inventory and did find a replacement power supply that should work on this unit. So I'm gonna change this out and um, we'll test it with the new power supply. Um, like, you know, I, 
I don't want to throw this away because I know I can fix it and that's just wasteful. So we'll change out the power supply and see if uh, the machine will boot up normally now. All right, let's go. Okay, so what we decided to do with this PC here is we ended up just changing out the power supply instead of repairing the old one because I didn't have the capacitors to uh, complete the job. So I put that in my uh, stock storage and I'll use that on a later project. So uh, for now, we have a solid blue power light and uh, the computer boots at this point. Power supply was bad. It was probably that handful of capacitors we were looking at earlier. So yeah, there you have it. We've got another device up and running and hopefully the client will be pleased to get their computer back today. You know, I could have ordered one for around a new power supply for around $50, $55. You know, it would have taken maybe a week to get here. And then, um, you know, that's a lot of time to be without a PC, especially when you need it for, say, work or communicating with, um, you know, loved ones on vacation or something. But there you have it. We are done. We have a computer back in business. And, um, you know, this will have an extended life at this point instead of just being thrown in a landfill. So I hope you like this video. Please subscribe and tell your friends about me. Um, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And until next time, keep being geeky. We'll see you later.